Welcome to Gentleman Boozer. I'm George Maurer. I'm at Dofo Winery in Temecula, California, part of Southern California's beautiful wine country. And this particular winery has its roots in Italy. Therefore, they do something that many of the other wineries here do not do. They distill grappa. We had a very simple philosophy of just let it be, you know, put it in the barrel, let it be, let it do its thing, and don't molest the wine, and just let it age peacefully. Grappa has a long-standing history in our family. Uh, when my dad went to Italy in 94 and saw his great uncle making wine in the basement, that was the actual catalyst for us going down this winemaking path. We started as home winemakers in Orange County. Uh, and part of that was grappa, you know, because the old man in Italy, my dad's great uncle, would make wine. And like every good Italian, make some homemade wine. He would make grappa and moonshine. So my dad came back with a spiral notebook full of notes on how to make wine. Uh, biodynamically actually because back in the day they used the moon cycle for winemaking and he came back with a rough sketch of a still and so we made uh, you know some grappa after we made wine we'd you know we'd make a little bit of grappa and it was kind of like a fun you know thing that we just did. Patriarch Marcelo Dofo also engaged in another passion along the way, collecting vintage motorcycles. And so growing up very poor, uh, they were out of reach for him financially. He never imagined uh, that he would own motorcycles. And when he got to a point where he could afford these things, he... But he, went, it, he went a little crazy. It, no, but it wasn't like that. It, yeah. it, it didn't go, it didn't all come in one shot. Sure. You know, what, what ended up happening came across an old Ducati that he remembered from his childhood. Uh, needed a restoration, so he bought it and restored the first Ducati. And it was, that was the catalyst right there. So then he started buying motorcycles that he remembered from his childhood. Mm -hmm. And so first it started out with a few bikes, you know, then we had more bikes and then there were seven of them in the kitchen you know and three in the living room so what'd your wife what'd your wife what'd your mom say about that well, my dad was a single dad so we didn't okay. have that issue uh you know it was right. funny you say that people would walk into our house never yeah. been to our house you know yeah. take one look into the kitchen and see a line of seven ducatis and like your dad, you're not married are you your dad's single right <laughs> uh, yeah how'd you know he's like that right there is a dead giveaway you know that's and, pretty funny that's uh good. but you know, he, he's married now and, and, you know, and so it's all, you know, they, they understand that it's, we, we view him as art. Uh, so today the collection is about 200 motorcycles deep. I was just going to say, how many motorcycles? Because there's a lot of them. Yeah, we're not quite at 200. I think we're just shy. I think we're at about 196, 197, but that's moment's notice. It could change and my dad, you know, acquires motorcycles um, <laughs> all the time. And now that we have a collection, people actually uh, contact us to, to donate a bike or say, hey, you know, I have this motorcycle, do you want it? Sure. Uh, it's, you'd be amazed what you can buy for a bottle of wine. It's, you know, you trade some wine and <laughs> you, you end up with a go. motorcycle. I, cool. I, a lot of the bikes outside have been traded for a bottle of wine. It was never my dad's intention to be a winery. My dad has intended, you know, to, to have a house on a vineyard, make a little bit of wine for family and friends, make a little grappa, and have a good time, you know, in that regard. And people would drive by the property, see the vineyard in the house, 
assume we were a tasting room and pull in and ask for wine tasting. Now, my dad's an immigrant and entrepreneur. If you pull into the driveway trying to buy something, he's gonna sell you something, right? And so uh, he would do impromptu wine tastings. Uh, and his whole thought process was he was commuting in from Orange County, so if he could sell a bottle of wine to make some gas money, it was a great day. His day was free. The other night I had a bottle of the first wine my dad ever made off the estate, 2002 Mistura. Wow. And it was so well made yeah. that it was completely alive. It didn't show any uh, signs of, of going past. Is that one of those moments in a boy's life where he just feels real pride for his dad? Totally, totally, and, you know, and I look back and, you know, my dad was making those wines and we didn't have a refrigeration system, we didn't have a variable speed pump, the pump was all or nothing, you know, you turn on this pump and it was, you know, as fast as that little pump could, you know, move the wine, it was moving it. It was real old school. Yeah, and, you know, filling a barrel, you know, was, was a, you'd have to watch, 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 and if you weren't, if you weren't careful, you'd get a shot of wine, you know, three feet up <laughs> off the barrel and wine everywhere, and you're yelling, turn it off, turn it off, you know, and. When the Dofo family decided to distill grappa commercially, they chose a traditional grape, Moscato, and one a bit groundbreaking. I decided um, that it had to be Malbec. Uh, one, because we make a lot of Malbec and that's our staple varietal. You know, we hang our hat pretty heavily on Malbec and, and we're very proud of Malbec being an Argentine descendant. On the wine side, I triple sort the fruit before it even gets into the the stemming machine so I'm, I'm and I don't crush the fruit it's a big difference there so my my base uh, fruit that I use is is very high quality and then it's not crushed so all those stems and broken bits uh, that other people would use or push steam through that it then would extract tannin uh, aren't present in mine so my grappa is, is very smooth as a result so even when you try it without cutting it at 160 165 proof uh, it, it's very smooth I mean even for 160 proof it doesn't doesn't come across as 160 Oh, yeah. And then closer aroma. It smells dangerous. What do you smell besides danger? Um, it almost reminds me of like sheet. a tequila. Like yeah, it's like a tequila. Like a silver, like a silver tequila. Yeah. But it's, okay. it smells like less sharp. And when you're I'm ready. I'm a little nervous. Okay, and when you're ready. It's nervous smell. Yeah, cheers. Be nervous, because it's been roofied for sure. Initial thoughts? Um, I could drink more. It's dry. It's a little... It's like a sharp tequila. It's yeah. so, but it's got a little different taste. It's a little more like licorice -y, I think. Or yeah. herbal. It's warming my belly. <laughs> it is. It's it's good though. Like there's nothing like bad yeah, about it. It's there's no interesting. cringeworthy likeness about it. Like I could drink more of it, definitely on ice. Like And that ice? generally means it's a quality spirit. Yeah, it's good. Like it's yeah. not bad. I thought I was gonna like give you the face and stomach churn and but it's actually really good. Okay. Can it's got a little sweetness to it. Can we try the Malbec grappa now? Okay. Mm -hmm. Same thing, smell? Same thing, go ahead okay. and give it a smell. Come on, give me a little off. I deserve it. Give it too. It's a little bit stronger smelling, a little bit more like it stays in your nostrils kind of thing. 
Mm, it's the other taste. You taste it? It's drier. Bolder. A little bit harder on the palate, a little bit more... Intense. I, yeah, I would prefer the first over the second for myself. The first one, the Moscato, is a more traditional grappa. Yeah. The Malbec grappa is actually sort of a unique thing that Dofo does, simply because they specialize in Malbec it's, grapes. It, it just feels heavier. It like feels it's like sitting more in later my, on. Yeah. I would start with that. Yeah. You might finish with this. This might it definitely tip builds. me over in an hour. It's minutes, a bigger taste. Ten minutes. Tip it's, me over. It's like three times more intense. A little warm. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer the first one over the second. I think that it's really good. Oh, it's more drinkable, I think, than this one. For me, personally. This, for one, my this one's to taste better as you drink more, though. Have another sip. One more oh, sip. Of course. That's good. <laughs> I actually enjoyed my second and third sip more. I did not. You did not? <laughs> no. I prefer the first one more. It's that one's just a little too dry. It doesn't have, like, the first one had a little bit more sweetness to it to where I could carry it off and continue to drink it a little bit more yeah, on the ice. The first one is definitely yeah, more Yeah, but the mellow. second one, it's... Bite you. Yeah. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the story. And if you did, you know the drill. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't tried or gotten into the craft spirits revolution going on right now, you're really missing something. I do recommend you look for a craft distiller near you because after all, there's always a good story to taste no matter where you are. Till next time.